Hi class, in this video we're going to go over chapter 23, International Trade and Capital Flow. So this is one of the easier chapter in the in the book. Uh, it's mostly just definitions and then one very simple uh, equation. Okay. All right. So first let's let's get started. Um, so we're going to look at the financial system uh, and then really understanding why do we have a trade of currencies in the economy, which goes back down to our um, export, import, so net export. So first term uh, definition, what is the balance of trade? So this balance of trade goes back to our net export. So it's any gap between the country's export and import. Um, and then what you, what you learn from the previous chapters is that in a uh, high income economy, such as US, Japan, um, um, Norwegian countries, that um, good um, is a smaller part of the GDP. Uh, but the service industry is a bigger part of GDP. So for U.S. economy, uh, think about our um, medical services, our ITs, our uh, education. So those would be a big components of our uh, service industry in America. But the actual good production is actually very small. So for U.S. economy, uh, we only have about 40% of the economy coming from good productions, 60% uh, coming from service productions or service provided. Next, know what's the merchandise trade balance. So merchandise trade balance, we're only looking at our uh, import-export balance of trade on good, not services. Um, so one thing that we are doing very bad in America is that we have very high um, merchandise trade deficit. That means every year we have more import on good than export on good. Uh, but on the other end, actually has a very healthy um, uh, positive trade uh, surplus of uh, merchandise, um, actually uh, services, so actually exporting more services than we're importing services. So think about many of the service industry in America, so um, business advising, um, accounting, education, medical services. So all those services are able to transfer to other countries and then making some positive income from those. Um, and then there are two very important account balance in this chapter. The first one is called a current account balance. So the current account balance measures the uh, three things. So it will be our uh, import export of goods and services, um, our flow of income, so either net income from other countries or income from America go to other countries, and lastly it will be foreign aid. So foreign aid, um, this is also called unilateral transfers. So it's the payment by government, charities, or other individuals uh, that send money directly to directly to the other country uh, without getting paid with any good or services. Um, so all the foreign aid uh, US and other country gave out to, uh, to developing countries, that's called, that's called unilateral transfers. Um, but also think about if you have any foreign workers who are in America, when they're sending money back home to you know China, Mexico, India, uh, that's also called a unilateral transfers. And for many developing countries, uh, unilateral transfer is a big part of the current account balance. And if anybody who are interested uh, look into the, the financial crisis in Sri Lanka, a uh, big part of it was caused by the change in the behavior of unilateral transfers by individuals who are working outside of Sri Lanka. Um, so two graph over here, so panel A shows you um, the, the current account balance uh, in America as a comparison to our merchandise trade balance. And if you can see, there's a very close correlation um, between our current account balance and also merchandise trade balance. But there's also a big shift happened around 2008, 2009-ish, that uh, ever since 2008, that the current account balance has recovered, uh, but the current, the merchandise trade balance has been falling consistently. Remember the merchandise trade balance uh, matches the the import export of good, right? So uh, <clears throat> as the U U.S. economy developing uh, since the last great recession, and this is a historical trend, um, this has happening ever since the early 1990s. The U.S. economy has been focusing on more and more of services and less on good productions. So that's why U.S. is seeing a big drop in our merchandise trade balance. Um, but the current account balance has recovered somewhat. Uh, that's because the other two part, um, for one, the foreign income, the U.S. company invests a lot of money in other countries. We're getting a lot of um, a lot of payment from those investments. That's for our um, our um, current.
current account has recovered, um, but that's creating this big gap between our merchandise trade balance and our current account balance. Um, and panel B shows you uh, our um, current account balance and also merchandise trade balance um, as a percentage of our GDP. So both of these are negative and both of these are big part of our uh, GDP. So for the merchandise trade balance, this deficit is almost 5% of our GDP. And then for, uh, for the current account, it's almost close to 3%. Right, so both of this is a major part of the US, US economy. All right, so um, for export of goods and services as a percentage of GDP, uh, US um, and also many developed countries as we're, more of, as we're integrating more and more uh, into the global economy, that the share of our GDP that's contributing coming from the export of goods and services has been increasing. And that's by measured by the dollar value of export divided by the dollar value of country GDP. So if you guys are interested, um, go to Google, type in FRED, F-R-A-D, and then type in uh, U.S. export as GDP. You can see how much of the U.S. economy has changed um, just by looking at how much our uh, the growth of export has been. And that really shows you the, the expansion of the globalization. And if you're interested, <laughs> also link, look into uh, the import uh, as GDP in U.S. economy. Um, no was the financial capital, so that's the international flow of money that facilitated trade and investment. Um, so there are two parts over here. So for our current account, um, that's coming from the financial capital, right? So for the trade for the import export, um, to buy and sell the import export, we need this flow of financial capital. So whenever you buy an import from other countries, you got to pay for it. So money has to cross the borders. And whenever you're selling something um, to other country, the money has to come into your border. So uh, this is a connection between the, the balance of trade and also international flow of financial capitals. Um, the economists sometimes call this the balance of trade uh, as the balance of payment. So there's a current account um, balance, which was mentioned earlier. There's also a financial account, which mostly dealing with uh, the, the flow of money coming from investment. So this diagram here seems very complex and confusing, but I want you to think this as a, another demonstration of Newton's uh, law. Remember, you will learn in your physics class that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction or a counteraction. So uh, let's let's look at the between um, the home country and then the rest of the world. Let's look at the top portion, right? So let's look at the export. So whenever we're exporting something to other countries, we're going to see a reaction in the opposite direction of the payment of export from other country to the home economy, right? So this is the action and reaction. And then for import, same thing. So when we're getting import from other countries, so let's say China, Japan, Mexico selling import to America, then we're gonna pay those import. So money has to flow in the opposite direction, right? So that's the flow of resources and also money. Um, so the top portion here, that is our capital account. Um, and then the bottom portion, we say that whenever you have a foreign investment going to other countries, then this will be called investment income received, right? Because for whatever investment, that's not free money. We're looking for return. And for those profit, when they come in back to America, they will cancel out our initial foreign investment. And also, uh, if you're receiving investment from other countries, so let's say if you have an investor from China, from Japan, investing money to America, that eventually those money, those profit will be flowing back to those investors, right? So another action and an equal reaction. So the bottom portion of this diagram here, this is the financial account. So current account on top and then financial account at the bottom. So whenever you have a current account deficit, so if your current account is negative, that means the country is a net borrower from other countries. So you borrow money from other countries. Uh, and if you have a positive current account balance, that means we are we're a net lender to the rest of the world. So we're lending money to other countries. For US, we have a negative current account deficit. So we borrow money from the rest of the world. Um, and then for the inflow, ex, uh, outflow of foreign aid, 
for foreign capital doesn't necessarily mean that the um, the government is in debt to other government because remember for the um, for the current account we have three components we have the um, we have the import export we have the flow of net income we also have the flow of unilateral transfer right so whenever you have a negative um, current account deficit it doesn't always mean that our government owes only money to other countries. It might also mean that there might be some real estate uh, transactions. So if you have, you know, foreigners purchase land in America, there might so also be some uh, um, foreign companies or U.S. company being purchased by other companies, or just you know purchase of bond and stocks in America, and those all have an impact on the inflow, ex outflow of, of financial capitals in the country. All right, so this is the first and the most important equation in this chapter. So the national saving and investment identity. Uh, you're going to see these letters a lot in this chapter, right? So make sure you know what they are. So S stands for saving um, by firms and individuals. So this is your private saving. Uh, M is your import. X is export. So together, this is your import minus export. And that's your trade um, balance. And then we have your private sector investment. Uh, that's the I, and then G is government spending, and then T is tax collected. So the left portion here, so your saving plus your trade deficit, uh, your trade balance, um, this representing the supply of financial capital. So for all the money we have uh, in the economy, you know, the, for all the um, the money flowing between countries, that's flowing U.S. dollar, that's flowing to other countries, uh, that's by saving. Um, plus our trade balance and then for the demand for financial capital for all the need of money in the economy uh, they're the investment plus how much money our government need uh, so government spending minus tax collected uh, for us we have a big part of this government spending need that's because every year u.s government is running a, a, a spending deficit that we are spending more than how much money we're taking in Now we hear the term trade deficit and trade surplus all the time. Um, trade deficit means that whenever your import is more than export, um, that's a trade deficit. Now, um, for many people in the economy, we're thinking, hey, that is bad because if you have more import than export, that means your money uh, is flowing out of the country. And we don't like that. Now, if you think about an individual household, um, that might be a good way of thinking that you want to keep more money on hand, that you want to spend less money and make more money. Um, but as a country, uh, a trade deficit might not be a bad thing. Because if you look at the other side equation, it says investment, subtract your saving, subtract the tax minus the government spending. That's how much money the government needs to borrow. So if you have a trade deficit, that means this investment is way more than how much your saving is in the country. So that's good. That means with a trade deficit, the country is able to attract investment from other countries. Um, that is actually what is happening in the US economy, that with a huge trade deficit, even though we are sending money to other countries to purchase the goods and services, but at the end, most of those money are flowing back into US economy in turn as investment. So that's why investment in the U.S. is higher than any other country in the world. Now, if you look at a trade surplus, that means you have more export than import. Now, that might sound like a good thing, but with a trade surplus for your balance of payment, that means your saving is more than your domestic investment. So what does the rest of the money go? Well, it goes to other country, right? So for China, they have a trade surplus. So that's why China is also sending money to America to be invested in America. So that's actually, that's actually helping our US economy. All right, so, so a couple key things you need to know uh, that if you rewrite it, this equation, so if you write it as the investment minus saving minus the tax minus government spending equals to your import minus export. So this, is, this will change based on how each variable will change accordingly. So if you want to uh, take a very close look at this, you're gonna see some question like this on your quiz. 
for for the short run um when the economy is in a recession um then this will cause some change in our trade imbalance so for example in a recession that means that means the economy slows down we might see a smaller trade deficit um that's because our consumers are buying less import um and then therefore we might see um our trade deficit getting smaller and then maybe our trade surplus getting bigger and then vice versa if the economy is very very good so in a very strong economy we might see a very big trade deficit um, or a very smaller trade surplus so for us we have a large trade deficit that means right now the economy is doing very very good we buy more import from other countries When governments and countries borrow money from other countries, um, it's not always a bad thing. So when you have an inflow of financial capitals, it really depends on how you use it. If you use it properly, so if the country uses the money to invest into the infrastructures, uh, invest into education, invest into more leading you know, exporting industries, that's good. Right, so look at what is happening in the U.S. in the you know mid of 1800s, so right before the Civil War, and also in Korea, South Korea in 1970s. So both economies were able to use investment very wisely and then develop the economy accordingly. But if the country used the investment unwisely, then those money can be wasted and also actually cause very harm to the economy. So Brazil, Mexico, and then many of the uh, country in Africa uh, experiences you know situation like this in 1970s, 1980s. Whenever you hear economists mention uh, the country's level of trade, uh, they usually refer to how much of the production of export the country has. So that's usually um, uh, measured by a percentage of export compared to the entire GDP. Um, and there are three factors impacting country's level of trade or level of export. So for one, what is the size of the economy? Um, for a large economy, they have to have a smaller size of level of trade or level of export. Uh, it's geographic locations. So are they really close to the ocean, close to everybody, close to a lot of neighboring countries that demand is exported good? And lastly, is the history of trade. Um, so last slide. Um, so the, the trade deficit can be good or bad for the economy. Trade surplus can also be good or bad. Even a zero balance of trading also be good or bad. It all depends on um, what the condition is for the country and also depends on how does the country utilize the borrow money um, to you know, develop the economy and then try to encourage more economic development. All right, guys, uh, so that's it for this chapter. Uh, have any questions, let me know. I will see you for chapter 24. Bye-bye.